In this video, we're going to be creating what looks like an apocalyptic scene uh, using a bunch of photo manipulation techniques. This is kind of a composition compromised of about five or six photos here. And all in all, it's more or less creating a scene that didn't exist to begin with, but using some dramatic effects as well as lighting, layer effects, um, colors, overlay effects, all this stuff to just recreate something that's just kind of out of this world. We've got different elements in the scene, like a truck, there's explosion going on with a bunch of clouds of smoke, some crazy clouds that are kind of a reddish color going on, on a cityscape line where this soldier is walking from through the sand. So it's almost like it's in the middle of the desert. So I created this from scratch and it was just more or less like scouring the web for some nice photos to, to use to maybe blend together to make something of them. And your results may vary. You can very well use different photos if you're following along. Uh, definitely check out the assets. If you are a pro subscriber, you can download those. The link to each of the images we use are in the credits file. So go ahead and open that and then just click to go see the photo. There's also a, a brush we end up using in this series, a, couple, a few brushes uh, that are smoke-based brushes that kind of just give it a little more flair. So right here, the very top layer is a smoke layer. So that's kind of a last little touch I add. Let's see what we can do to recreate this. And that's what we'll do to kick things off. And this actual size of this document is going to be 11 by 17 at 72 DPI. So. Not a huge file, and that's okay because it's more of a digital composition. So I'm gonna create a new document and make it document to inches just to start with. We can change it to pixels later. And we'll do width 11 and height 17, keep the DPI at 72, so that's great. So we'll go ahead and hit okay, and there we go. I'm gonna save this one down as apocalyptic scene. Let me go to my desktop. Save that to our end folder, which is where you'll find this. And we can just start by kind of crafting where these photos will end up going. So the main one that we're gonna start with is the cityscape. And in the start folder, you're gonna find all these photos. And so here's that truck, here's that soldier. Let's see, we've got flames, the desert scape kind of look, the crazy clouds, which look really awesome and some kind of smoke effects here we can add as kind of just a, a tweak to the overall image look. Here's that cityscape and what we end up using here is the water tower. It's actually a SpaceX water tower. So I'm just taking pieces of photos and making a composition out of them. It's, it's pretty fun so we'll see what we can do to get started here. I'm going to start with this cityscape and open that in our document. So I'll go ahead and place it in that case. We can just go to file place and go to our start folder photography and go for that cityscape hit return it's not going to place it immediately by default if you click once it'll go at full size if you scale it by clicking and dragging you can kind of customize the size you want to go with and by no means do I intend to make this exactly look like this first go around but I'll include both of these so you can kind of use them both as reference um, but we're going to kind of mimic it for sure. So we'll start with something like so, maybe even smaller, just to kind of keep the boundaries of the cityscape within the, the document. And you'll notice in the first go around, there's no water in this scene, and that's on purpose. I wanted it to be sand below instead of the water in this photo. So what I'm going to do is more or less mask that out and then bring in the sand photograph that will be the background at the very end. So we can actually do that next just to get it going. So I'll go ahead and place that in. I think it's this one here, yeah. And we don't use the sky in this photo, so we're kind of swapping what we do and don't use in this case. And this one I want scaled pretty large because I want it to take up the rest of the document. but it also needs to go up to this bottom of the cityscape. So we uh, might even increase the city a bit so we don't have to scale this too far. So something like that, and then we'll start to brush away this water to give the effect we're after. So let's start there. What I wanna do is just create a simple mask and we can either go ahead and brush that out or possibly just do a quick mask selection and see what we can do there. So I'm gonna just try to select the water the best I can you're gonna probably get remnants of boats and whatnot here. 
in the coastline. In fact, I did that on the mask layer, so I need to start over. See how much I can select at once here. Decrease the brush size and use a modifier key. I'm, I'm holding Option on my Mac right now. It might be Alt for you on a PC. And you can kind of take away some of those selection in real time as opposed to adding it. Or if you prefer, you can select this toggle up here and do the same thing. It's a little more time consuming that way. It's up to you though. So by no means does this need to be perfect, but I just want to give it kind of a quick take on this so we can kind of refine it a little bit later. All right, so we'll start with there. And what I want to end up doing is go to my mask layer and just within that boundary, I want to fill it with a dark color so it kind of takes away from that photo. It's going to default to white here. I'm just going to do black and you'll see it update in real time there. So I'll deselect by hitting Command D. And then I'm gonna go back through to that mask and first scale this bottom photo up a bit so the sand's actually what is in view. And we actually want the sand to be above this photo in the end, so we need to actually do the same effect with this photo, which should be a bit easier since the sky is about pretty close to one color. So let's see if we can do the quick mask with this one too. There you go, and you can delete that if you want i would recommend just masking it out just so you aren't doing a destructive edit so that we could do the same thing here if we create a mask it's going to do the opposite instead we need to actually in invert the selection so go to select invert pixel selection and then hit this mask icon here and it's a little rough around the edges but it should be enough for what we need and i actually need to scale it even more so it matches what we're indeed after you're going to see parts of the actual image still not masked, which is a bummer. So we'll have to go back and maybe edit that or just kind of move it around to where it looks okay. So maybe something like that looks okay. And for now, I'm going to lock that layer and then go back to the first one. Actually, I'll go back to this one and then edit this mask a bit. You see some um, fragments on the edges. You can see some pixels that are coming through that just don't look very professional. So what I want to do is just brush some of those out and just get a basic brush to start with. Maybe 16 points and decrease the opacity, hardness, pretty much all the way down. Just along that edge, kind of zoom in to where you see different colored pixels here and just start taking them away. Make sure your color in this case is set to black so that you can subtract from that. And why don't I actually increase the hardness to maybe halfway? and the opacity all the way up. That way you can take a lot more at once. Just kind of ever so lightly go around the edge here. So that looks softer around the edges. The problem that we face now is that it looks like it's not ending. On a hillside, at the very top of the hillside, if you think about it, from a long distance, it's got kind of a darker shade at the very top. So what I'm gonna do is select that mask by command clicking on the mask. And let's just create a new layer, pixel layer. And I just wanna kind of brush back a darker color on top of that mask. So I'll get the brush again, and I'm gonna hold option and just sample parts of the image here. I'm holding the wrong button there. So option like this sample just something like that to go with it could be even darker if you really want and a quick tip is if you hold control and option together and click and drag you can adjust your hardness and the width of the, the brush at one time so it's kind of nice to as you scale the hardness goes up and down like that it's kind of a neat trick to do with an infinity photo so i'm going to decrease the opacity altogether on this brush and go to like 40 percent maybe even more and I actually want the hardness to be basically to nothing. So, so this looks a little more believable as we go in and just brush around this edge just to give it a little darker, I guess, re resolution. Uh, maybe go higher in opacity on the brush, 50%-ish. So where the hill kind of ends is we just want it to be a little darker. And if you spend more time there, you could do even more like a darker color in some spots. Maybe we'll do that just to give it some dynamic effect. 
So maybe darker on this side. It's the same with the concave here, that the higher hilltop would probably have a lighter side. This one over here has a darker one to begin with, so we can make it darker. So that's the foundation there. We've got more or less the main size of the composition set up. And from here, we just need to start adding elements and applying a lot of effects to make it kind of look like a apocalyptic scene. We go pretty far to make this pretty dramatic in this case. So the next one I want to add is this cloud layer. So this looks kind of a bright, happy scene, and that's not necessarily what we're after. So we want to add one more photo that's going to make this a little bit drearier and I guess more um, dramatic. So this very cool cloud image I found can make a difference here. So it kind of apply it over top and possibly just toy with blend of modes to see which ones could kind of lend us a hand here, but also make it pelling. Maybe multiply would look okay. And then we kind of need to just subtract parts of this image to be not there. So what we can do is do a mask here. And I think what I'll do is just brush away this part of the image. So I'm on, I've got the brush tool active. I've got my color set to black now, and then past the hundred hardness at zero, we can start there. Just kind of work our way in a little too far there. And let's kill the opacity to, I don't know, 30 ish percent. Kind of want to get away with just the clouds and that image we placed and then apply some actual color effects to the overall image below to give it a drearier effect. So we're kind of using that darker tone to our advantage. So kind of brush this out so it's a little smooth and we can even recreate that layer and use it again, but just in a different way, maybe transform it flip horizontally and then let's kill the mask on that layer and just restart from scratch. In fact, I'll probably go like this and then just brush away on that one to get the effect we're after. So we need to adjust the effects of the image below the, the main cityscape because it's a little too happy looking. So let's add some to make that a little drearier. We can probably do some HSL effects that go just below that. We need to drop below, do something like that. Kind of take out some of the pigment and possibly decrease the luminosity. On top of that, we need to probably brush away some of the sky from this image, to be honest, because these clouds look too separate at this point. And I think the, the cure there is to get away with some of the clouds. So why don't we try the quick selection brush and see if we can do a decent job with that. I'm gonna try to separate some of this back. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you also don't want the buildings to look any different than they would be. I'm holding the modifier key right now on the option key and brushing back from the buildings out, outward kind of getting more pixels that are part of the building. This one and in, in its entirety isn't even there, so we need to add it back. Okay, with that done, we need to get the inverse of the selection and mask it. So let's go and go to select, invert pixel selection, and then let's try to add a dark color to mask it out. It looks like it masterized it though. We need a mask actually on that image. So let's do it this way. There we go. And I'll deselect that. And if you really want, you can go and refine mask by right clicking on this. So let's see if we can refine this just to be a little more exact. We decrease the border width to like 2% and apply. There we go. It's a little softer on the edges, not so frail. So now we can actually take these clouds and put them behind that image and possibly just delete the mask we we're working with to make it a little more dreary. 
Same with the first one. So I didn't actually end up doing this in the first one. So this will get a different effect for sure here. These are considerably too dark right now. So maybe we'll do one that's uh, multiply and maybe one that's not. Maybe overlay or soft light like that. And then the multiply could be maybe half. But we do need to brush away parts of this image because it's overneath a lake. But I might just actually do this trick where I scale it so we don't even see that part. I think that'll work. And then we definitely need some effects on these buildings because they're just not blending right. So let's start again with that and add some levels. And this needs to be nested. So it only affects that layer. And possibly some curves. Take some darks and make them lower in their tone. Increase the contrast at the same time. So it looks a little better. So on top of everything, I added one more image that was more or less like a, a bluish effect to give it kind of a, I don't know, a different take. We also have some red on the buildings that kind of carry out the red in the clouds. So maybe we can even brush in some of that. So I'll add a layer first and kind of sample that red color holding option. Maybe something like so, and then we can Go as far as selecting the buildings by command clicking on that layer and then using a really low opacity brush just to kind of give this a little red from the clouds above to make it look a little more believable. And then that layer we can maybe adjust with the blending mode to just be yeah, like a color burn that looks okay. things I see with the building image that are kind of bugging me like the outer edge is it's got kind of this light stroke like naturally from the mask itself so I might actually refine that one step further and do another border width adjustment and see what happens seems a little bit better Looks a little rough though, so we can even go back through with our own brush and kind of make adjustments on our own. So maybe I'll do that real quick. Okay, so with a little refinement and quite a bit of brushing, we, we more, more or less made the buildings look a little more like they fit. Just around the edges, they had this sharp edge to them and I wasn't really digging it, so I made it a bit different in the look and feel. So let's keep adding some effects to this. I think what I might do is use a lens filter, just kind of give it a cooler, or not cooler, a warmer effect with that red kind of going on there. Okay, so overall in our first scene, it's got kind of this bluish reddish tint to it and that's just kind of an effect we added to. It's a soft light blue that we added. It's a 65% opacity. So maybe we'll do that to kind of make this a little less red, uh, but also continue that effect. So this needs to go over top of everything. We're gonna command right bracket it to the very top and we could just name it 65% blue soft light and just to be thorough the color we got here we can just copy this color 6880CA and paste it in and that isn't taking oh I'm on the stroke no wonder so let's clear that out I don't want a stroke but I do want this to be soft light and then like 65. There we go. So I might actually decrease the lens filter just a tad on the buildings. There we go. And we could do the same kind of effect to the sand maybe, but just kind of enhance it with some levels and curves perhaps. And this is gonna be nested under that. 
kind of want to make these vibrant, very vibrant compared to what they were. Okay. So this scene's got more darkness to it and that's simply because I added my own custom vignette to it. And I think we'll add that, but I'm gonna work on the actual elements of the image still first. So let's work on this background image and getting it in there to kind of have that explosion going on. And it's oddly enough, fairly easy to do. We just need to place that SpaceX photo I mentioned earlier. And I'm just gonna use the side that wasn't the rocket right there and kind of just have that match up with the buildings and just be in the you know in the foreground and then what we'll do is click this gear icon right here and this is going to be blend options but you can choose the source layer ranges and if you just kind of mess around with the sliders here you can make certain parts of the image blend in and others blend out it's kind of nice so we can even go as far as like enhancing or de decreasing some of this I think what I did is a V kind of shape, possibly. Can't quite remember, but I'm gonna to try to experiment here and make sure we get it to about where we want it. I think something like this ends up being what we use. And I really think this should be a tad bigger. Obviously the water tower probably wouldn't be that tall. Maybe that would work. And to make it a little more believable, of course, we need to mask that out as well. So let's continue on with the masking. Uh, I've got my brush, hit B, there we go. Uh, opacity, the width is way too small, so we want that larger for sure. Let's make the foreground black. And let's see if this can come through a little better though. I wonder if I can adjust this range to adjust and make some of that come through better. No, it's just taking it away. So let's try something like so, and then I'll brush away the other portions. So we want the definitely the smoke to remain, but the rest to kind of go away, and I need a mask before I paint. So I'll undo that. I've got a mask, so let's paint on that, just this black. And where the buildings are, we definitely don't want the smoke. In fact, to make this really exact, we can use our cropped building layer to our advantage here again, and then go back up to this mask and hit fill. If we go to edit, fill, black, there we go. And then we can brush away the other stuff that's just there, like below here. And you notice these don't blend too well, but with some finesse, we can get them to kind of look the way we want. Just turn the hardness all the way down on our brush. Just kind of point and click in, in the edge there to make the, the clouds kind of carry over. And you can kind of subtract other parts of the image just so it looks a little more believable. There we go. It looks pretty good. So why don't we add the fire next? We have this kind of explosion going off that makes all the difference there. And I wanna kind of recreate that. And we can do it in a very similar way. So let's go and place that. I'll just make it, I kinda of want multiple versions of this, but smaller cause it's pretty far away. And then since the, the black background is there, this is gonna be super easy to do with the same kind of method. We just turn this black all the way down and you can even toy with this a bit to kind of make it still maintain its color. And then we could just kind of manipulate it to fit where we want. So let's scale it down again and I'll Alt Shift click and kind of make more out of that even rotate it to make it look more believable. Could probably add one that's behind the buildings. Yeah. And possibly increase its, maybe just duplicate it. Or which one we got here? Yeah, that one. Let's make it a little more sharp. Let's see how we did it in the first one. We just got kind of one to the left and a couple to the right, so it looks okay. I'm gonna delete one here and then 
add one right here and I think what I'll do is brush some of it away in a mask so it's more believable so we'll get our brush back out and where this building is I want to take a part of that away increase the hardness so it's a little more exact I want it to be on the other side of that building to make it ultimately believable and we could even have some coming back around with the hardness down and yeah, maybe the opacity too just so it's like wrapping around the building I've got the wrong color though let me get white so it's all the way and maybe a bigger brush just kind of click a bunch in kind of a specified area and you'll start to see the flames come through all right so I'm not believing the one that I sent behind the buildings. I kind of want one that's in the foreground, but not so in your face. So it looks like we're, we've got one here that's two parts of an image. Unless I miss, there it is. So we've got two flames here. And I'm gonna do the same with this one, just on the other side. So it's a bit bigger and I'll just mask that out same same method so we have we need black so i hit x on my keyboard for a shortcut there definitely want the opacity up so something like that and we can even toy with that image to be a little more vibrant i think i want to increase the curves so it's comes through the the actual image more make sure you nest this and then you can like bump it up just to be brighter Maybe I'll duplicate one more flame, the left one there, and then just increase it. And then move it behind the other. And possibly contort it a bit so it's not the same exact place. And work on the same mask a bit. Oops, not that much. Just to kind of give it its own effect. There we go. I added that curves adjustment, but it looks like it's a little too bright up in the top. And the beautiful thing about the adjustment layers is that they are a mask out of the box. So we can add back or subtract, I should say, some of the adjustment just by brushing onto it with a dark color. So you'll see I'm on that curves adjustment layer and we're just kind of slowly taking some of it back. All right, so I'll save that down. And up next up, I want to add the truck that's in this image. And I'm not really sure why I included this. It just seemed like a, you know, a nice extra object to add to the image that wasn't so focused on this guy in the middle. So let's go ahead and add that. And this one I want to open up separately because I want to actually mask it out completely so we can subtract it from its own photo and then place it as a photo with transparent background. So I'm gonna duplicate this image and I'll just save it down this truck and we can actually hide this background and we'll start with the quick mask or the selection brush tool and see what we can do about just getting the outer elements. And it's probably gonna be easier to actually brush the truck instead of the space around it. So let's start there and this might take some time so I might speed this up. All right, so it's a fairly rough selection and it's okay that I got the shadow below. I think I'm gonna try to work with that on our image that we're working on and see if I can incorporate it. If not, I'll try to just brush it out manually. Uh, but at this point we can select the invert pixel selection, just get the background and mask this out. So, oops, I did it backwards actually. So let's undo that, undo the invert and then just hit the mask. There we go. And then I'll hit Command E to s stop the selection going and press V to get my pointer tool back. What we can do here is either, you know, rasterize the file as is or just keep it as is. I think I'll keep it as is and just save it down so we can manipulate it further if we need to because we still have the mask there. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, you can just rasterize it and it'll remain 
uh, just one pixel based image. So let's place that affinity photo file into this composition now. And looks like it's behind the scenes, so we would definitely want to move it up. And put it below that blue, bluish layer. So I got this in the pretty far background and my first composition here, it's just like below the cityscape um, focal point or the, what do you want to call that? The, the coastline. And it's looking pretty good, but the shadows are believable from this distance. So I don't have to do a lot to it to make it look like it belongs. Um, I will probably tweak some of the colors on it to match the photo a bit better. So you'll notice it's an embedded document. We can do that still. So I might do some HSL adjustments here and put those below, increase the saturation, maybe give it more of a red tone, maybe decrease the saturation, uh, increase it. And then uh, let's see what we can do to possibly clean up the edges on the shadow that are going on. We can still add a mask to that and maybe I'll get a rough textured brush in lieu of a basic brush and just toy around with this some. Get a dark color and we could see a preview of it there in the, in the dark zone. I want the hardness higher. I just kind of want to brush away some of the, the harder looking edges. Just subtle effects, nothing crazy here. And then it needs probably to blend a little better with the sand since it's just kind of a bluish tone. So I think we'll adjust some color effects further. Maybe give it a, a lens filter adjustment. It's kind of a warmer effect. Yeah, that looks better. Default setting is pretty good there. And let's add it to just below and maybe curves. I almost want to take away from this image. So we can kind of scoop it or ever so slightly bump it up in the middle there. Looks okay. All right, so the next step is to add finally our our guy here. And sadly, like, like the image with the truck, we need to actually mask it out too. That's kind of the, the name of the game with this stuff. So luckily it's got a white background, but there's still some work to do to make it work that we would want to. So I'll just go ahead and save it as a soldier. Unlock that layer. We've got that saved. So we can basically just do a, you know, let's go back to the quick selection brush. And I'll just do the white edges. I might actually just do him. So that's a pretty good start. There's some parts of this that are going to come through as white and that's okay. I think we can deal with it later on. So I'm going to actually just mask that out. So there's no background and deselect that and save it down and we can paste. We can either copy and paste this image into the other one, or I'm just going to place it as an embedded file. So let's see how big we want him. Pretty large because he's going to be walking towards us. That's probably too big though. Like that. And we'll put it under that purplish filter we've got going on. And obviously he doesn't look like he blends in yet. So we'll actually need to adjust plenty to do with him. So let's first get these white areas out of the picture and I'll create a mask for that. Might just have to manually do some of this, which is perfectly fine. It's kind of what I intended to do to be honest. So let's see if I can get this to look okay. Okay, so with those selected, I think I'm going to fill them with a black tone. And we should be, oh, we need to actually make a mask or fill it on our mask, I should say. So we need to select the mask layer first and then hit apply. And then you still see elements of that white. So we actually need to go back through and brush that out further. So let's get a brush tool. I want a basic one. We're still on our textured brush from before. Make it pretty dang tiny and hardness about halfway down. Make it black 
and then just kind of where you see these white squares in the pixels point and click and just slowly start to remove those you're probably going to remove some of him too and i think that's okay as long as you not it's not like super obvious so just trial and error here if you do remove some just swap your foreground and background color so you could just hit x and you'll have white and you could just brush it back all right so around the entire mask portion there's still that little little element of what i would say is like bits of white that are coming through since the background was white so we can try to refine this mask and we don't have that option to do it right now uh, so what we can maybe do is have this selected as it is and we can just kind of refine the edges here so it's going to do quite a bit of work i only want just a little bit to happen so maybe two percent on the border and we'll hit mask with that and it looks like it masked the wrong part so let's undo that let's do a new layer with mask doing that same thing. So we'll select fine edges. Or let's hit let's hit it with the selection, and see what happens. So if it went in or out. Looks like it went in a bit, which is what we want. So with that done we can hit um, it's a little trick is to since it's selected, let's hit the invert and then fill it again with black. And it should just take just a little hairline of stuff off the edges throughout the whole the whole image. So it's kind of a, a trick I've learned along my time of doing this. So let's first make his feet look like they blend in. Like the sand here, I guess I probably want it to look a little more like this because it's a little too orange in this photo. And I think that's just simply a effect we have on it. So let's maybe tone that down, the curves. In fact, I'll increase those and maybe decrease those. So it almost looks like it's later in the day. Yeah, I like that. And he can probably even be smaller. So something like that, make sure it's centered. And what I did to kind of make him blend in a bit better is add a shadow that is kind of realistic in the terms of where the light's coming from. So to me, it's coming from the front and then turning from right to left. So the shadow, the realistic shadow that he would cast would be over here somewhere. So I'm gonna actually just brush that in to the best of my ability. Increase the brush size, I have black selected. I'm just gonna decrease the opacity a ton and the hardness all the way down and just kind of start feathering that in. And the shadow is going to be typically taller than the individual, the rate of where the sun's at in a given day. So we'll just brush this in to see what we can make look realistic here. So something like that I think looks okay. So that is actually above him. So that doesn't make sense. We need it behind him. And then let's adjust his layer to be a little more balanced with the actual composition around him. So maybe increase the blacks. It needs to be nested again. Possibly add a lens filter. I think that looks pretty good. There's portions of them that I'm not digging. Um, we might do some sort of blur effect that could just kind of change the way he looks. So it's going to be blurry for sure, but I want to more or less come back in with a brush and see how this looks if I start brushing away that effect some. Increase the opacity. I almost don't want it to be believable, you know, like his arms moving, so it should blur a little bit over here. Just little little details like that make a pretty big difference in a scene. So the same could be said for the buildings behind, like we could go back to that layer back here, do something similar, maybe a depth of field filter, and you got this kind of 
effect that you could apply and make it central to the image. So the outer edges are pretty blurry. And you can even adjust the shape to be more of an oval effect. And maybe we'll increase this overall. Something like so. You can increase the clarity and vibrance in the middle. But what's great is you can come back through and brush some of that away just ever so lightly. And I want his effect on his feet to actually blend into the sand somewhat. And it's kind of a tricky thing to do. So what I think I'll do is basically brush away some of his shoe. So almost appear in that way. Like it's sunken in the sand a bit. And give it this, like there's smoke almost coming over his feet once we get to the smoke brushes that I'm going to add. The actual sand below could probably use some treatment. It's got, I'd kind of like it to be not as prominent. And I'm wondering if I can use a, like a smudge tool or something to make it less um, with these creases in it, you know, with the wind going on. Let me try something here. Let's get the smudge tool. We're even use the medium brush tool that might work as well. That's gonna rasterize that layer sadly. So maybe I'll get back away from that one. I'll duplicate it first. And let's get the median. I think that would have better effect. We do both. Some smudge too. And I'm going to end up just decreasing the um, opacity here. So And We've got the second one, so we can just decrease the opacity. In fact, why don't I increase the opacity and then brush away up here. So I'll get the black and we've got opacity there. Start brushing away that effect. And it's like point and click here, just ever so lightly. So it's not a huge difference, but I think it's not so obvious, I guess. And I might refine these boots a bit. So we need some shadows under those. I think that's the issue. So let's add one more pixel layer and get our black brush out and decrease the opacity a ton. And it's going to be overneath the shoes at first, but we want, we're going to send it to the back. So it's below. There we go. And then we can adjust the opacity there and even the color overlay so we can add a layer effect to kind of blend in with the sand a bit. So we can use our picker tool to kind of get this darker shade of purple. If, oops. There we go. And even make it darker from there. Maybe add some noise. I prefer the HSL. Something like that. And then if we want to make it even more believable, we can kind of brush some shadows onto the boots. So I'll do one more layer and get our color. We pick this brownish color and then go a little darker than that. And just brush around the edge of that. This pixel layer probably needs to be above him. I think that's less obvious that he's just like standing on top of the image like it looked like before so all in all this is taking shape so i think i'm, I'm digging this the last thing i want to do is add one more layer on the very top that's more of a vignette effect and you can apply this using a filter you can just add one in the affinity photo library I, i'm going to do one that's man-made so more or less i brush it on so let me just get a pretty low opacity brush with a pretty huge width maybe like 500 pixels something more like that and then just around the edges of the, the composition just kind of give it a couple brushes and just start to kind of make a vignette look so we kind of enhance the focal point of the image which is the soldier plus the background of course and then on top of everything, we'll do one more layer. And I'm going to call this 
I haven't called it anything, but we'll, we can call it smoke. I think that's how you spell it, vignette. So smoke, I've got these set of brushes I linked to in the credits. So if you're following along, feel free to go find those. Basically, we're just gonna have a, a lighter color that overlays everything here and this creates more of a unruly atmosphere. So I would recommend using different brushes throughout here, uh, just so it's a little more dynamic in what you pick and choose. But obviously it's up to you what you wanna do. So it looks incredibly like forward right now, but if we decrease this a punch and just have almost just the, the strokes of the brushes coming through, so you can see the texture, that's kind of what I'm after more or less. You can even adjust the blend mode, maybe a soft light would look okay. It's kind of endless what you could do. I love this live update. So possibly, uh, I think normal looked okay. We could just increase the opacity some. And if it looks like it's a little too much to you, you can go back in and just mask out some of it. So. Guys, I think that's about it. Hopefully you enjoyed this. It's kind of more or less a manipulation effect where you just take a bunch of other photos and make one out of it. I really love doing this. It's kind of just a great way to explore the features available in Affinity Photo. You learn a lot by doing it. Masking it in this kind of situation is huge. So I find it particularly useful. If you haven't done it before, this is a great way to practice. So hopefully you enjoyed it if you did and followed along definitely as always feel free to share it below in the comments and if you have any questions of course ask those too so that's it for now and thanks for watching